your car guy here. Today we're working on 2008 Honda Civic. Uh, the vehicle has run low on coolant and overheated and since then has been running rough, which means we have a misfire. And as a matter of fact, we've had the engine flashing, so we know we've got a misfire code in the computer. So I'll walk you through the diagnostics we're gonna do here to make sure that we can figure out what all needs to be done. Now, if you look up under the driver's side of the dash, this is the connector for the OBD2 scan tool. And I've already got my scan tool hooked up and we're looking at, we have a P0117 engine coolant temperature sensor circuit low. Uh, that is probably from when it was low on coolant. And if we scan through our, we have a P0302 cylinder two misfire detected. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check that cylinder for compression as well as checking the plug make sure it didn't just get it too hot and burn that plug out cylinder three misfire as well on a 303 and I expect we're gonna have a random multiple cylinder misfire a PO 300 and we do uh, this will usually come with any single cylinder misfire so if you fix cylinders two and three it'll clear the 399% of the time so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna open the hood and we're going to pull out the spark plugs and we're going to do a compression test. Because this vehicle is overheated, I'm going to test to make sure that we have not blown a head gasket and don't have low compression in those cylinders or even maybe cracked a head. Now, if I was just looking at those codes by themselves, uh, 302 and a 303, I would start looking at the ignition coils on the cylinders and the spark plugs themselves versus going after a compression test. But a compression test isn't hard to do uh, as it's just not difficult on this vehicle at all, very easy to get to. So if I look right here, each one of these black coil packs, and let me put the hood pop rod up so I can point. All right. This is our coil pack, and this would be cylinder one. The reason it's cylinder one is because it's the one nearest to the front of the motor, front being where all our belts and such are. are. Uh, the transmission is on the side away from it, tucked up underneath all of this. So we'd have cylinder one, two, three, and four. We show a problem on two and three. Now we're gonna compression test all four cylinders so that we have a reference of what the compression should be. So easy enough, we'll simply unplug each one of these by pressing the uh, tab and then just simply pulling it out like that. There's a little right here at the back. That's the tab, press, you can hear it unlock and then simply pull it out. Then we're gonna take off this nut right here and we will then be able to just pull out our coil packs. All right, so what you can do is just take off the 10 millimeter nut right here. And because I'm taking out all four at once, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep them in order, at least these coil packs in order, because what I wanna do is make sure I know which one went where. If I was doing a normal misfire, what I might do is take the coil pack on the cylinder that says it's misfiring, swap it with a different cylinder and then see if that misfire then moved to the new cylinder by driving the vehicle. Checking the code and say if I went from a P0302 to a P0301 when I swapped the uh, coil packs, I would know I have a bad coil pack and it's simply as, uh, as simple as going and buying a coil pack uh, versus buying a coil pack maybe and finding out that that's not the issue after I put it in. So just a real simple thing, take out your nuts off of these studs, pull out the coil packs, keep them lined up in order. Okay. I'm going to take out the spark plugs. It's a 5 8 spark plug socket. You could get away with using a standard socket if you didn't have a spark plug socket. What a spark plug socket has is it's got a little rubber retainer in it that'll capture the spark plug so that when you pull it up out of the deep hole, it brings the plug with it versus having to re try to reach down in there. Now, if you didn't have that uh, spark plug socket, what you could do is use a magnet to retrieve the spark plug. So we'll take them out, and if you look right here, nothing really 
terrible on there. We have some brown discoloration. Most of the time that's from fuel additives and that's a fairly normal looking spark plug. But we'll remove all four and then we'll begin our compression test. Okay, we can look at our two different spark plugs here and get an idea what's happening. This one is number three and I can see a lot of this discoloration and it's even wet with a little bit of oil. I know that this cylinder is not firing based on what's here. Here's cylinder number four. This is what I would consider perfectly normal uh, for a cylinder. That's what I would want to see on each of my spark plugs. It could be a little more brown than that, but overall I can tell, hey, I definitely have a misfire. Here in cylinder number three, I'm not getting a either a good spark or I may not have good compression. That's why we're going to do the compression test. So we'll do that next. Okay. All right, here's my compression tester. This one obviously has been used quite a bit. I've had it for a long time. All we're going to do is we'll take this, we'll screw it in where the spark plug was, we'll crank the engine over, and we'll see how high of compression this cylinder builds. We'll do that on each cylinder. Now, I've removed all four spark plugs, which means the engine's going to turn over very easily, and it's definitely not going to start. So we'll be able to do that by putting this in each cylinder, cranking it over, reading our compression. And all you've got to do is take slide it down in. Now this, you'd think, hey, I put my spark plugs in with a uh, ratchet and I tighten them up. No, you don't need to tighten this up with a ratchet. You're just doing hand tight. Otherwise, if you were trying to do that, you'd have a heck of a time getting it back out. Now I've just got it sitting in that hole. I can go and crank the car over for three to five seconds and read my compression. So what I'll do in this case though, is I'm going to have my assistant get in the vehicle and crank it over and we'll watch the compression gauge. Okay, so right now I'm starting on cylinder number one, which based on my misfire codes should be a good cylinder because it didn't have any misfires. So go ahead, crank it over. That's good. Now look, we've got compression up around 180 PSI here. That's a good cylinder right there. Now, before I go in, pull it out. This is a relief valve right here on the side. I push it to relieve that compression and then I can simply unscrew and move to my next cylinder. Okay. Here we are, cylinder number two. Go ahead and crank it. Stop. Look at that. We've got 180 PSI. Cylinder number two. This is one of our cylinders that was showing a misfire. So this is good news so far that we may not have any engine damage. We'll relieve our pressure and we'll go to cylinder number three. So here we are in cylinder number three. Go ahead, crank it over. Stop. Look at that, cylinder number three, 180 PSI. That's good news for us so far that we aren't gonna have any issues with compression and we're just gonna be able to chase down our misfire and our coolant leak. So next we'll go to cylinder number four. Okay, okay cylinder number four, go ahead, Dan. And stop. And look at that. Cylinder number four, we're over 180 PSI, so we're good on our four cylinders for compression. This would be a good indication that we don't have a blown head gasket or a cracked head from the overheating that occurred, and now we can simply chase down our misfire. Because I see the condition of the spark plugs, we're going to go ahead and put new spark plugs in, regardless of whether they're the problem or not, and then we'll go through our coil packs and find out if we need a coil pack. And again, we can do that by moving the coil packs to cylinders they weren't in originally and running it to see if that code then changes, say, from a P0302 to a P0301 or from a P0303 to a P0304. And that would tell us that it's a bad coil pack. The other option that could have happened in this case is simply that when it got hot, the spark plug burned out and therefore it's just a set of spark plugs. But we'll check that and verify. Okay, we went and got some new spark plugs for this car. In this case, we got the Bosch double iridium. Iridium plugs are factory for the car. It would have come with an NGK, but uh, the NGKs weren't in stock. The Bosch will be a fine replacement. So we're going to put them in. A couple of things to note when you're installing spark plugs. So they come with this protector, and what this is to do is to keep it from crushing this gap. People will talk about gapping spark plugs, but if you look at the electrode here, you don't want to be prying on this because you can break that electrode. So these come pre-gapped, which means you take them out as long as this hasn't been damaged and crushed and has that pinch down there, you don't need to gap the spark plug. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of anti-seize on 
and we put it on the threads here, what this does is this keeps the spark plug from seizing into the aluminum housing of the cylinder head and causing it uh, to uh, basically pull the threads out. So I, you don't need a lot on there. You get it down into the threads and as it screws in, it'll work it up to the top. That will prevent any kind of seizing and make it to where when you do the next spark plug job, they're gonna come out nice and easy. Now, when I install the spark plugs, we wanna put them in finger tight at first. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll put them into my spark plug socket and set them in there just right at first. And you'll notice the spark plug socket, if you've got a good one, it's gonna hold the plug so it's not gonna drop. Now, I am not going to use my ratchet to turn them in initially. I'm simply gonna set them in gently down into position and then just hand tighten them. This is important to make sure that you don't cross thread the spark plug, which would be another issue that could cost you a very expensive repair. Cross threading is where you start to get it in and you think you've got it threaded right. Then you take the ratchet and you start torquing it down. And what happens is these threads here aren't engaged correctly into the threads in the cylinder head. And what it does is it just tears them apart as you go in. Uh, you can even end up breaking the spark plug off inside there and then you've got a, a repair that will most likely require the cylinder head to be pulled. Just a simple hand tighten. You're not trying to torque these down really hard. If you do, you risk breaking them or stripping the cylinder head again. It's like 10 to 14 foot pounds is normally the spec. You can look it up online. So we'll go ahead and we'll put all four plugs in, then we'll put in our coil packs. Okay, we're gonna put our coil packs in. We've got all our spark plugs in. It's just as simple as slide it in, make sure it goes through the bolt right there press it down nothing special to it i'm going back in the order they came out and i'm only doing this right now it wouldn't really matter because i did have a misfire before and so we're going to put the coil packs in and retest now that we've got new spark plugs and we know we had at least one that was fouling or not firing right and then i can if needed move a coil pack to test for uh, to see if one is bad if it is simply plug them back in if you can hear the lock actually clip once they're all the way on and if you look you'll be able to see that this tab is back down this is back up where it's supposed to be and that means it's locked in then we're going to simply put our nuts back on that secure the coil packs and again these are a 10 millimeter they don't have to be super tight. You're gonna break one if you try to over tighten them. So just hand tight a little bit and you'll be in good, good shape. They're gonna be in your seven to eight foot pound range or less. So not much. And then we'll simply clear our codes and test to see what's going on. So we'll tighten these up real quick, clear our codes and see how it runs. All right, so we've done our plugs, and in this case, I still have a rough running engine. If I was just doing spark plugs, I'd be done at this point. Um, it hasn't set a code for misfire yet. It'll probably have to be driven to do that, but I'm going to do a few other things before I take this one for a test drive. Okay, we put our spark plugs in. We still had a bit of a misfire that I could feel in the engine. It hadn't set a code yet, but I went ahead and I did something. I had a couple of extra coil packs um, that I had saved from a previous project. And so I went ahead and swapped out two and three, which were my uh, ones that had been coating and the engine smoothed out right away. Now I wanna show you something that I found when I took a closer look at the coil pack. You know, everything looked pretty good, except you see this checkering right here and those cracks. Those cracks are indicative of a spark leak out the side of the coil pack right there actually burning through and causing a misfire. So some sometimes the subtle things that you may not notice right away, and I mean, you can see the little burn spot there, those things can indicate a problem. So just a matter of inspection. And like I said, you could have swapped the coil pack, run the test drive, recheck your code, and you would have had it. Now I know some of you may not have a code scanner, so stay tuned to the channel. I'm gonna be doing a giveaway for an OBD2 code scanner here very shortly. But we've been able to do a simple tune-up, change the spark plugs, got the car running right. We've corrected our P0302 and our P0303 codes. 
and now we have a good running vehicle again. This is your car guy. Please like and share our videos and subscribe to the channel. Help us grow.